the old Reformed church in Hopewell. This is the original church at the original hamlet of Hopewell, New York, before Hopewell Junction was a junction. Reformed church at the juncture of Beekman and Clove Branch Road, the site of the original hamlet of Hopewell. Protestant Reformed Dutch Church of Hopewell, founded 1764, rebuilt 1833. Well, the sign says it all. This is the original Hopewell hamlet right here, Beekman and Clove Branch. That's the old general store over there. This is the historic hamlet of Hopewell. Fishkill Creek runs right down there. This is Beekman Road here. And this is Clove Branch Road. Now the Clove Branch Railroad off of the Newburgh Duchess in Connecticut looped on around up there on that hillside. We'll follow that one of these days. As rail beds were constructed and railroads began to prosper in the 1860s and the 1870s, the hub of transportation had become the busy junction of several railroads at present-day Hopewell Junction. Junction being the key word used to describe the meeting of two or more rail lines. The two main railroads crossing at Hopewell Junction were the Indian Sea, running from Dutchess Junction to State Line, Connecticut, and the Maybrook Line of the New York Central, running from Danbury, Connecticut westward to Maybrook, New York. Hopewell Junction thrived and grew into one of the busiest rail hubs around. Stores of all kind, hotels, bars, and eateries served the population. At its peak, three rail lines utilized two stations, a crossing, control tower, a turntable, a roundhouse, a large coaling station, and a yard 22 tracks wide. A large Borden's Creamery was built right in the yard limits to receive milk from local farms and ship it out to New York City markets. The rails of the Indian Sea were pulled up and scrapped in 1938 and 39 time frame. The rails of the Maybrook line, which was the New York Central, Penn Central, ending with Conrail, lasted into the late 1980s and early 1990s, from Poughkeepsie to Hopewell. The 1974 fire on the Poughkeepsie Rail Bridge was the final blow to this line. Today the rails are still in place from Hopewell to Danbury, Connecticut, with a recent side-by-side -side trail for walking and biking. So here we have the Hopewell Junction Depot uh, 2023. It has been lovingly restored by a very dedicated group of volunteers over the years, over the many years, and uh, is a thriving hub here at the rail trail on the Maybrook line. They've got a nice collection of some Rail related items that still grace the yard here with future plans on eventually reconstructing what they have. Let's move on and show you some new stuff. They've got some nice stuff that they've acquired along the way that tells the story of early days here in Dutchess County and much like uh, across the whole entire nation. Borden's Creamery, the production and cutting of ice on local ponds and such. Here is the basically western side of the building.
it has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places. That was a great feat for them. And a beautiful plaque here that was dedicated back in 2012. Bernie Rudberg, of course, being a major contributor with his many books and knowledge on the Newburgh Duchess in Connecticut and the Maybrook Line, mostly based around Hopewell Junction. Now here's a recent acquisition. It's the old Delaware and Hudson 35-845 caboose that the depot has recently acquired. I've got it set up here on a short little siding track built in 1916 and as you can see last year they moved it here and their plans are to restore rebuild and it will be a static display for all to see and go on and touch and feel and see what life was like living on a caboose an old wood sided And they've got it sectioned off and tarped off because they literally just got here and they haven't started working on it yet. More to come. A few years back they rebuilt, or they built I should say, in the site of the original signal station 196 where you can get your Coca-Cola and your Reese's. Right here at the crossroads of where the Maybrook line crossed the Newburgh Duchess in Connecticut and a year or so later in honor of our buddy Mr. Bernie they constructed this beautiful pavilion right on the trail with some great signage telling the history of the who what why where's and when's of railroading in Dutchess County and specifically Hopewell Junction. And this is a great place we have set up right here. Our band and played music for the last several years. So if you're standing here at the depot in Hopewell, we're currently looking east uh, toward Danbury. The green highway bridge there is Route 82 that cross crossed over the rail beds here beds plural now only one and this is now looking west toward the uh, on the Maybrook line toward the Poughkeepsie Railroad Bridge and if we walk down here a bit farther we are basically standing they have it all mapped out here on the floor, on the ground, on the concrete. Newburgh Duchess in Connecticut ran east and west, north and south. And there were two lines, four lines here, going north, south, east, and west. Hopewell Junction. They've done quite a nice looking right back there beyond that little uh, toy caboose, if you will, um, was the Borden's Creamery. We'll have some pictures to support that. So I had mentioned the little toy caboose, as I called it. This was their mock-up, very nicely built small caboose. When they were doing their fundraiser to get the necessary monies to purchase and transport uh, the caboose I just showed you, this was set up as a little static display to uh, give some incentive. And I mentioned the purchase and transporting of. For those of you who have never bought and transported a caboose, uh, the cost can be as little as $5 or $10, and the seller is usually very happy to get rid of it. Um, the transportation costs can run in the multiple tens of thousands. Um, you just don't haul it behind your, <laughs> behind your Ford F-350. And of course, for those of you that know, this is the part of the Empire State Trail, hiking, biking, walking, that connects uh, downstate with upstate New York. Gives a little history here on Hopewell Junction and the Depot Museum. 
there are kiosks many of them here and of course all the benches and hardware has dedications to the names of the folks who helped pay for them along the way Hopewell Junction I'm right here give you a brief overview here we're gonna walk down a little bit east of here and look for the remnants of the concrete footings and piers for the old coal tipple which were down that way and I'd like to introduce to you the Chevy silver Chevy truck yet unnamed I'll take some comments uh, we're looking for an S name masculine S name uh, to replace Sam the silver car Sam the silver car has some other plans in his near future silver truck we pulled out of the terminal there the depot at Hopewell we traversed our way across onto route 376 which is the primary road that travels to the depot this is the rail crossing this is looking south toward um, Dutchess Junction Plum Point on the Hudson River looking south as we flip around here we notice the tracks modern day do veer off to the right which does go through the former yard and connect with the Maybrook line however right about where we're standing just to give you a rough reference here all these royal carting dumpsters are piled up here for those of you local folks that are uh, kind of following along here and want to get a grip for where you are we're on the s turns on 376 way down there way down there down there is the depot you can see it the tracks go off to the right the tracks had a switch here multiple switches right about where we're standing that fed into the creamery the creamery was basically right in front of us um, where that big patch of weeds and brush and overgrown trees are we are basically standing about where the Borden's creamery was um, the Newburgh Duchess and Connecticut came in and did go straight with several sidings off of the creamery yard here and went right down to where that depot is down there and continued on up into Arthursburg, LaGrange and points north. Driving through the creamery. Hold your breath. And when we do that, we end up in the yard of uh, private property here. It's Ortez Welding. Um, you can't miss it. It's all the trucks, truck bodies, and trailers. And the Maybrook line ran north and south and that continues on down those rails down into Danbury it's a Sunday afternoon and I don't really want to take a chance getting shot or killed here by the officer Roby just to give you an idea right back down there is the depot and the caboose right there that's my finger and we drove on around through Hopewell and we came down here in the vicinity of Big Daddy O's uh, restaurant bar and we are currently underneath Route 82 the highway bridge as it has been called for numerous decades um, this is the Hopewell yard you can see what's left is basically the one main line and some spurs 
this yard, or as they say in Boston, this yard, once contained 22 tracks wide worth of yard. That's incredible. We are now in the yard. And here's the main line right here. And it is now currently owned by Metro North. It's called the Hopewell Yard, Metro North employees only beyond this point. So, cannot go in the fence, but we can walk all around here and show you what's what. Here we are on the, uh, what would be the south side of Route 82. This was once a hustling, bustling, one of the busier, or if not the busiest, train yards certainly in Dutchess County and definitely in the region there goes a biker look all dressed in orange and yellow here's a little trackside shanty and we are now officially abandoned rails lost rail beds here we are we got a switch tower platform still left here seized up many years ago but it's all still there Let's see if we can get a name off it ah, it's a it's a rake core it's a fairly new one 17 G yep still there and this was the shanty that the yard man worked out of Got a big pile of something in there. I'm not sure what it is. It looks kind of gross. Let me stick you in there. You see what you can think. What do you think? Paper? Cardboard? Not sure. Did you see a body? All right. Hopewell Rail Yard. Uh, eastern section of it. Beyond the depot. Beyond the north, south, east, west crossing beyond modern day depot and Ortez yard let's go on down the trail see what we find all right walked a couple hundred yards down these are indeed the sidings that went into brydane lumber uh, modern day williams lumber here in hopewell let's see where we're at these little kiosks are mighty helpful. It gives you a uh, you are here kind of a kind of a deal, kind of a, fa a feel for where you are. Well, enough about that. Okay, here we have two very distinct right here. One right here. Two sidings going into the Brydane modern day Williams Lumber off of Route 82 here in Hopewell. Let's go. Yep, there's a modern day Bethlehem switch stand, number 30. It's got a modern day rail lock on it. That is within the confines of the Metro North Yard. Now when I say Metro North Yard, uh, trains don't come flying through here carrying throngs of happy passengers coming and going. This is um, a designated training yard for Metro North here in Hopewell. They uh, bring new employees up here and teach them the, the what's and what not to do uh, with equipment, which is a great thing. Training, number one. And here we can see the sidings get farther and farther apart. I would say at this point, going into the Williams yard, they are probably 20 feet apart. Walking farther down into the Metro North Yard, they're teaching the boys and girls how to cut rail. Look at those nice little one inch, an inch and a half thick pieces. Those would make nice little desktop paperweights, wouldn't they? Yes, they would. We've got a nice collection of rail piled up here and ties and we're getting closer to some equipment wow we stumbled upon a 1902 
Baldwin Lima 040. No, it's something. It's a gizmo to do something. This line continues on into the Williams yard and it's got some nice piles of pressure treated stacked up on it. A lot of money sitting there, folks. Here they are. There's one and there's one. And just a little ways over here. Hey, look, we're giving Williams some free advertising. Nail it right the first time. Right here, it appears as though this siding has been torched. Right there. So this siding has been torched, and I do believe, oh, looky, boots hanging up in the tree. Hey, Jed, I ain't wearing these no more. Yep, so what they did was uh, they torched those rails by the boot tree because they built the trail, the walking trail, and it went right there. Can you see? This doggone fence. Yeah, right there. That was the siding. And they've got a lock on it, see? They got a bumper booster dead end lock on it. No trains beyond this point. Hey, I'm walking right here. And there were probably many. Uh, oh, here it is again. Still here. So this appeared to be the main uh, primary siding into Williams Lumber. Lost rail beds. That definitely qualifies as one. Cool. So if you're hired by Metro North and you uh, are going to be assigned to the track crew, you will more than likely be assigned here for a period of time to the Hopewell Training Yard to learn how to basically build and maintain a railroad. All right, we're going to stay on the trail like the sign says, and we're going to continue walking east on the Maybrook line out of Hopewell toward Whaley Lake. And we are looking for something very specific. I'll give you a clue. It has to do with a coaling station. Okay, that main siding is still here at the end of the Williams Lumber, present modern day Williams Lumber, used to be Brydane. And here we got some rail stacked up. Not sure if uh, Williams owns this rail or Dutchess County owns this rail. Um, or Metro North owns this rail. Uh, nope, there's a whole bunch more right here. But at any rate, don't come over here with your little S10 and your Volkswagen Rabbit expecting to take this stuff. But there it is. I think we're at the end of that siding. There are still ties down in place. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much farther it goes. Might have just ended. Well, let's all take our hats off and bow our heads to the railroad tie mass burial ground. We found it. We found it. Out here behind Williams in the woods. We got some short eight footers. We got some Switch ties, nice long ones. Rest in peace ties, rest in peace. Okay, I see what they did. We're way beyond Williams now. That main switch siding that runs through the middle of their yard continued down. They also torched it and ripped it up and it continued to right there because it picks it up again and it goes it's at the extreme eastern end of the metro north training yard which we are quickly barreling down to well i wouldn't say quickly i don't do much quick these days and i certainly don't barrel anymore there's a quick shot through the fence of another switch stand um, still in place historic not new and we are nearing the end of the Hopewell Junction yard 
Petro North Training Yard. There's a Hopewell and 13 on the sign. Railroad property, no trespassing. Oh, and we got one more switch stand. Let's see if I can run over to the location. There it is, right there. I know you see it, through the fence. Let's go. At the end of the training yard, once again, we're back down to just the main line. And it's right there. And we're about to enter into what the what? Huh. An old switch tower. Yeah, the remnants, remains of a hmm, bunch of stuff lying on the ground. Oh, oh, here's another siding over here. Yeah, look at that. Huh. Well, let's see if it ends or if it switches back into the main line up here. Okay, kids, this is cool. It's double tracked. Double tracked iron girders. This was not a siding. Uh, the line was double tracked here. This is the evidence of it uh, where we crossed this creek. And this one, if you notice, has been well maintained. This iron girder bridge. There are some of the old stone remnants of the original abutment. Um, that side has been very well maintained. That's the east track. This is the west and definitely unused track. Um, cool. Could this be the Fishkill Creek? I'll have to check. Cheers. 